Hey guys, it's Megan Larson and I'm back with another video today. I'm really excited for this video. I'm going to be showing you guys um, some techniques. My childhood best friend is coming over and I'm going to be doing her hair in my beauty office room. So I'm going to show you guys my setup. I'm also going to be submitting her hair into a hair contest that Paul Mitchell is running. It's called Color Outside the Lines. Anyone can enter. Um, to win. They're doing a $1,500 cash prize. Um, they're going to be featuring the winners in some magazines and there's like a whole list of prizes. Um, so anyways, I'm going to enter her into the blonde category. So we're going to be blonding today. And um, in just a second, I'm going to show you my setup. I'm going to show you like the whole, everything we're going to be doing. And then I'm going to take you through the whole entire process and show you my techniques. Um, I'm going to show you our inspiration picture. I'm going to show you her hair but when she gets here and show you the before, take you through the whole thing. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. I got some really cool techniques. I'm really excited about the type of blonde we're going to get her. We're going to get her nice and icy with a little bit of shadow root. We want to keep her shadow root. That way it's low maintenance for her. So I'm going to flip this around, show you guys the products I'm going to be using on her hair and my setup so you guys can see everything. Okay, so right when you walk into my beauty room, this is the setup that I have gotten together. So what I'm gonna do is she's gonna sit there and then I am gonna put my phone up there and record for you guys. That way the light is coming in. That way it's a lot brighter and better lighting so I can really show you guys the techniques I'm using. This is my color stand. And today I'm going to be using my Fermar foils. Of course, you guys, I just live for these foils. They are just so pretty. I love the way they feel in, oh my gosh, I just love foiling with them. And then I'm going to be using Paul Mitchell Synchro Lift on her hair with 30 volume, at least starting on the bottom because her hair is a little bit darker on the bottom. And then I'm going to be putting this Brazilian bond builder in her hair to make sure we protect her hair as it's being lightened. So that's what I'm going to be using on her hair today. And then I told her to come in, in a black shirt or bring a change of, to, so she can change into a black shirt because I really like the contrast of blonde hair being taken on a dark backdrop. So that's the plan. I got some black poster board right here. I got two. And I'm gonna try to set these up somewhere after we finish her hair today so we can take some really cool shots of her hair to submit into the contest. And then I do have my reflectors here to reflect the light if we need assistance from the ring light um, in taking our after shots. And then it comes with this case so I can use the silver and then you can also flip it inside out and there is a gold inside too. Um, these reflectors are super inexpensive. They are, it actually twists and folds up in a small circle and they fit in this little bag right here. So they're very easy to travel with and it's the same brand as my ring light. And you can purchase all of these on Amazon and these are actually linked on my Amazon. Um, I'll link them in, down below that way if you guys want to check them out. They're really awesome. All right, so this is my little setup for the day, and I'm excited to take you guys through the whole process, the techniques I'm gonna be using, the before, the after, and then even how I take my after pictures and submit them for the contest. Okay, you guys, my bestie's here, and here is her hair before. So you guys can see it's a little bit darker underneath, so we're gonna really focus on tipping out her ends and getting them really light and blonde. And then you can see her roots are starting to grow in a little bit. We still want to keep that rooty look, but I'm going to brighten it up a little bit and do some baby lights up here. And then we're going to focus on tipping out these ends a little bit more. And then we are going to end, her finished result is going to be a nice cool blonde, nice and healthy and shiny. So I've already mixed up her sink, Paul Mitchell Synchro Lift with 30 volume. And I've got the Brazilian Bond Builder in here and we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start on the bottom and I'm going to use a teasing method to focus on just tipping out the ends and blonding the ends. And we're going to stay away from her scalp area. 
All right, so my first section, I'm gonna start here in the bottom and I took two diagonal sections, one here and one here. And what I'm gonna do when I go through, if I see any pieces that are already really, really light, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out with my Paul Mitchell Pro Stick. I love using this for foiling because it makes it really easy to get clean sections. I can weave with it. I can bend my foils with it, fold my foils with it, and it just helps me foil a lot faster. This will also be linked below so you guys can check it out. I've got it linked. I get asked all the time where I get these. Um, so I got them linked for you guys. Um, but I'm gonna start by doing some thin slices. And think about how this hair is gonna fall too. Once we get it done, this is always the hair that comes forward underneath. And a lot of times when people say they don't feel like they got blonde enough, a lot of times it can have something to do with these lower sections on the corners of people's heads because this is always the hair that falls forward. And if this isn't light enough, a lot of times that's what people are gonna focus on and they're gonna see. So I'm gonna take a slice and it's not super thin, but it's not super thick either. And then she's got a couple light pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick those out. And then I'm gonna give it a quick tease, start at the bottom and tease up. I'm not gonna tease it a lot because I don't want the hair to get matted or tangled when we wash it. And I don't want it to be a lot of work to get the tease out. So I'm just gonna give it just a quick push up. And then the rest of the ends are gonna get satur saturated. And then I'm gonna take this comb or my brush and just feather up. And this is gonna create a really soft feathery blend. And then I'm gonna take my brush and just X down the hair, make sure it's separated and everything's really nice and saturated. And I'm just gonna fold it up. I'm gonna fold it up a little past where this one is. That way this little bit of lightener doesn't get on the other hair. And then we're gonna fold it right there and then do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna take a pretty good size slice. And this can get a little bit lighter. It's a little bit golden and I wanna see that get a little bit brighter. So we want it nice and icy. So I'm gonna start from the bottom, push up once, make sure that's nice and locked in right there. Grab my foil. I'm gonna place it right here. And then I'm gonna fully saturate this. And then I like to start from like the mid shaft, work my way down, get that nice and saturated. And then I'll use my excess product to feather up. You never want to have too much product up here because that's when you can get lines of demarcation and it starts to bleed and get a little bit messy. So then I'm going to just take some of this product from the mid shab, work it up and just do a nice soft feather. And if it gets teased like that, you can see there's a little bit of product on it. That's okay. That's going to blend really nice. And then we're going to fold it the same way. And then I'm going to fold this one up a little bit higher and then go ahead and lock it in. All right, my next section is going to come straight across. So our first section was two diagonals. And then this one, I'm going to take straight across and get a nice clean line. And then I'm going to start on this side. This is this section is really dark. So I really want to make sure I get this one. And I'm actually going to go ahead and take a thinner section because I want to get in some more foils here. So I'm going to clip this up with another clip and we'll get that section next. All right. So I'm going to take another slice and this one's going to be a horizontal slice. And I'm not worried about blending or anything because we're tipping out and we're teasing. So even taking a horizontal slice with this method, it's going to blend really pretty and really nice. So I'm going to start in the middle, work my way down to the ends, and I'm totally comfortable using 30 volume because one, I do foil really fast, but also we're starting at the bottom where it's the darkest, and I know that we're going to have plenty of time to let this process, and then as I work up to the top, I'll probably switch over to a 20 volume with sinker lift. I'm just going to fold this, overlap the top a little bit, and then lock that in. And then I'm going to come over on the other side and do the same thing. I'm going to take a slice, and then I'm going to take my comb, tease it up once. 
And I like using the light teasing method for tipping out the ends because it creates a little bit of a thinner section on the ends, which also helps the lightener to saturate through the hair. You never want your sections too thick whenever you're blonding because, especially if they want it light, because if it's too thick, it'll never get light enough or it will take a lot longer to get lighter, I should say. Lock that in. And then I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna take this section down, do the same thing. I'll clip this back up here. And then I'm gonna take another horizontal section. The thing I like about these for Marfoils too is that they're extra wide. So I can take a little bit wider section. So this is a pretty decently wide section right here. And I'm able to fit it all in because these for Marfoils are wide. Also, we'll link these down for you guys. That way, if you guys want to see where I get the Primar foils, a lot of times I'll just order them off Amazon. And they come in different colors too. This one is the Stark Starstruck Silver, but I also like using the rose gold ones and I love using the black ones. So I'm just gonna X this, make sure it's nice and saturated, and then fold this up. It's gonna be so pretty. Can't wait to see after it's done. All right, and then there's just a little piece over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this whole section right here and get my comb, give it a little tease, and then place my foil here and saturate it. So I'm just gonna work up her whole entire back section where you can see all this dark, do the same thing. I'm gonna keep my horizontal sections, tease it a little bit and tip out the ends. And I am gonna be picking out any pieces that are already super blonde. That way we protect the integrity of the hair as we're lightening it. But also keep in mind that Brazilian Bonder is gonna keep her hair really healthy as we do this lightening service on her. So I'm gonna work my way up the top in the same sections. I'm gonna pack these foils in here because we wanna get her really nice and icy on the ends. And then when I get to the top, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna shift it a little bit when I start incorporating the baby lights in her hair. All right, so I just finished up working in the back and we're right here about the crown section of the head. So I just took a section straight across here and I'm gonna start doing some baby lights through here. So I'm gonna take really fine, really fine weave and I'm gonna clean it up underneath, make sure it's nice and clean. If you don't have clean sections, then that's when you're going to get bleeding and you're going to have all these different marks on the hair. So make sure your sections are nice and clean. And then I'm going to place this foil right here. And I'm actually not going to go all the way to the root. So what I'm going to do is start applying the lightener about an inch away from the scalp. Get the ends nice and saturated. Make sure you guys can see this good. Okay. And then I'm gonna get all the ends in here, get it nice and saturated. And then what I'm gonna do is take the excess and I'm just gonna feather this up into her root. So it's gonna be a nice feathery blend. It's gonna be pretty close to her root, but it's not gonna be like perfectly as close to the root as we can get it, if that makes sense. So then I'm just going to fold this, flip it over, make sure there's no lightener and then I'm going to lock it in so it's nice and tight and then I'm going to take this and we're just going to do baby lights the rest of the way up the head. I'm going to take it all the way across and then I'm going to start, I don't want to get in front of the camera but I'm going to take another very fine weave, make sure it's nice and clean under here and then I'm going to take my foil, place it right here and then I'm gonna start about an inch away, do the same thing, saturate the ends, and then take my excess and just feather it up. And when I feather it up, I'm doing like a C motion, so it's like a backward C. So I'm feathering up and away. And by doing this, you're making sure that you're not gonna get any lines of demarcation. 
if you go like this into the scalp, you're gonna get excess color on the scalp, but if you feather up and away in a backward C motion, then you're gonna get a nice smooth blend. And if your foil slips at all, or you have too much color, what you can do is take that little tab in the back, flip it over, and then lock it in. And then you got it really close to the scalp and you're not gonna get any bleeding. So I'm gonna finish off the top section. I'm gonna do maybe two or three more foils like that. And then we're gonna move to the front and I'll show you guys the front. All right, so I just finished the back and I forgot to mention when I switched to her baby lights, I did switch to 20 volume. So now I'm working on the sides and I'm still gonna be working with 20 volume because typically the hair on the sides is a little bit more fragile. So I'm gonna take a horizontal section and I'm gonna continue the teasing again. And I'm gonna tease about halfway up the head, maybe a little bit more, and then I'm gonna do some baby lights on top. So I'm gonna tease this a little bit, grab my foil, and then basically continue the same thing that I was doing in the back, tipping out the ends. I'm gonna saturate the mid shaft to end really good first, and then I'm gonna start working my way up a little bit just by feathering up. And again, we do wanna keep some depth in there and some darkness to keep dimension and also just have that contrast because believe it or not, having contrast in the hair actually makes the hair look blonder, which is completely opposite of what people think. They think they need every single strand to be completely blonde, but sometimes adding in a low light actually makes that blonde pop and makes someone's hair look blonder. I'm gonna take a really thin section and I'm actually going to not leave any hair in between this one. I'm gonna give it a little tease and then I'm just gonna saturate this with lightener. So I'm gonna do this up the head a little ways and then I'm gonna switch over to baby lights and I'll show you guys what that looks like when we get to the baby lights. All right, so I just finished both sides and I'm gonna show you on her last side what I'm gonna be doing. So turn my head this way a little bit. So I started in the front and I'm actually taking a vert well, it's more of a diagonal section right here because I really wanna make sure I get her front piece really good. So I'm gonna take, do a baby light right here. Make sure the section's nice and clean. And then I'm gonna grab my foil, still using 20 volume. And for this front piece, I am gonna get all the way up to the root because I really want her to have that money piece in the front. Who doesn't want the money piece? So I'm gonna saturate the ends really good and then I'm gonna take my brush and just feather it up really close to the root area and then just make sure that's all saturated and we're gonna fold it up nice and tight. And I'm gonna take maybe two or, about one or two more foils right here, just in this front piece right here. And then I'm gonna switch and start doing some horizontal sections to finish her up on the top. And I'm gonna be doing baby lights. So the next section I take behind this one is gonna be very, very thin, because I want them to be really close together. So I'm gonna take another thin slice, and then I'm just gonna baby light this. Take a really fine weave, and clip this hair out of the way. Make sure this is nice and cleaned up. And then place my foil there. Make sure this is cleaned up on top as well. I'm just gonna squeeze behind the foil. And then I'm gonna start applying a little bit away from the scalp, saturate the ends in the shaft first. And then I'm gonna feather it up towards the root area. And if your foil slips away while you're coloring the hair, you can feather it down and push the hair back down so you get it really close. And it'll stick right back on the foil and it should stick and stay. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold this back up and then flip this under so it doesn't bleed, and then I'm gonna lock it in place. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and start switching over to horizontal sections since we're near the top. And I'm gonna start doing really fine weaves and I'm gonna work my way up all the way back to her part. So I'll show you guys this one and then we'll move all the way up to the top. And for this one, I'm gonna feather like I did on the, with the other baby lights. I'm just gonna feather up to the root area. That way we still keep a little bit of depth at the root. And that way it'll grow out really nice. I'm gonna apply all my product on the end first, come back up and just feather it pretty close to the root area. And then I'm gonna fold this, make sure I don't have any bleeding and then lock the foil in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna tip out some of her ends in the front. So I'm gonna start kind of in the middle, take nice flat sections like this. You don't want hair bunched up like this because then it's not gonna penetrate all the way through and it can cause blotchiness. So I wanna make sure they're nice and smooth. I'm gonna tease it up just a little bit and we're just gonna focus on putting some lightener on the ends. Her ends are pretty bright right here. We are using 20 volume but I do want them just to get a tiny bit brighter. So we're just gonna bump them up a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of lightener, just feather it up. And then fold this up. And where, oh, let me get my pro stick. And then I'm gonna work my way up her head in between each foil and then we do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna do this on the sides because I got the back really good already, but I see some places that need a little bit more brightness. So I'm gonna tease that a little bit and just saturate the ends, tip them out so she's nice and bright. And then after I finish doing this, we're gonna let it process. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, watch it. When it gets nice and bright, we're gonna wash it out. And I'm gonna look at her hair and then we'll decide what we're gonna tone it with after. And I will definitely show you guys what we're gonna to be toning with. And then we're gonna finish her off with a nice treatment. I'm gonna do the Awapui Wild Ginger Care Triplex Treatment on her to get her hair nice and prepped and healthy. And that way we can get it as shiny and healthy looking as possible for the pictures. We are keeping it healthy, but never hurts to do a treatment before or after a blonding service because it just makes all the difference in how the hair feels and looks. And then I'm gonna come over and get some of the pieces hanging in her front. That way we get this nice and bright. So I'm gonna clip this up out of the way. And we'll get this piece right here. I'm gonna fan it out and then tease it a little bit. And then go ahead and place my foil here. And I'm just going to apply the lightener. And then I'm just gonna feather it up. And the reason I'm not doing every piece again is to keep some contrast in the hair. We do want it to be a very light blonde, but we wanna keep it very dimensional also. And then I'm just gonna take this piece right here, tease it up a little bit. And then apply the lightener on the ends. And her ends are just slightly golden. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but that's why I'm applying a little bit more lightener to her ends, just to bump them up just a tiny bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this one right here. And we're gonna push this up a little bit. And lighten these ends. And then this will be my last piece on this side, and then I'm gonna go over to her other side and do a couple on that side. This is actually her heavy side that I'm working on, so I won't put as many on the other side.
And then when I finish the other side, I'll take you guys in the back and show you what her hair looks like as it's processing. And we'll take a peek at these and see how they're looking. All right, so here's her whole entire head foiled. Oh, you guys can see. All right, so let's take a peek at one of these back ones and then we'll let her process for a little bit. And while she's processing, she's gonna do her makeup, get ready for our little photo shoot after her hair's done. You guys can see it's still pretty golden. So we're gonna let this process for a little while longer. So we'll let it process. She's gonna do her makeup some, then we'll wash it out, tone it. So I'll show you guys that when we wash her hair out. All right, so she's finishing up her makeup and we are gonna step out here into the hallway. And I got two black poster boards. So I'm gonna set this up on the wall and we're gonna take her after shots right here in this little hallway. After I absolutely love how it turned out. So we just blow dried it and I'm getting ready to curl it and put some wave in, but look how pretty this is. So I ended up toning her with Paul Mitchell the Demi 10A, which is 10 ash. And look how beautiful and ashy and icy this is. And then you can see her roots. We still left her roots like we wanted. We brightened her up around the face, but still kept her blonde. That way this color will last her a long time. And then I used two products before I blow dried her hair. I used Paul Mitchell Avapui Blowout Spray. So the Hydra Mist Blowout Spray just gives a little bit of volume. It's very weightless, so it doesn't leave the hair gunky or sticky. It's very lightweight. And then I also used Paul Mitchell Super Strong Liquid Treatment, which just strengthens and repairs the hair. And then we also did a treatment after we toned her hair as well. So pretty. So I'll show you guys what it looks like after, and then I'll show you guys the pictures that I take of her hair as well. I'm gonna show you my at-home setup for our photo shoot. So I have four black poster boards in the back behind my girlfriend, Tori. So that is gonna really make her hair pop, and they're like a dollar, and I got them at Dollar General, so you guys can like literally pick them up anywhere. We're gonna be using my ring lights, and then we're gonna be using my fan. So using a fan is like a great way to create movement. So Tori's gonna stand in front of the fan. I'm gonna show you guys like what it adds. You can add a lot to pictures just by like having a fan or if you have somebody that can help you, they can use like a cardboard and you can literally just wave a piece of cardboard in front of your model and it'll create movement. So this is another really good way to change your pictures, um, especially for a photo shoot or just in your everyday pictures at the salon. So I'm gonna have Tori turn around and face the the wall and I'm gonna show you guys on video and kind of explain really quick how I would take how I take my pictures in like in general at the salon so for example we're gonna pretend like this is my screen right here and I'm just gonna snap a picture even though it's just a, it's a video so a lot of hairstylists would stand right here and be like okay there's the hair I'm gonna click this picture right here how it is on screen and there's my work there's my picture but the thing you want to actually do when you're taking a hair picture of anybody's hair is you actually want to get as close as you can to the hair without cutting off the hair. So I'm actually going to turn my screen the other way and show you guys how close I would get. So if say her hair is exactly how I want it in a picture. So it's a little crazy and frizzy right now. We were playing with it, but this is how close I would get to take the picture. You can see how there's very little room around the picture it's mostly all hair so you want to get really close versus far away like this because look how much of a difference it makes when you get this close versus this far and i'm going to post her pictures that we take so you guys can see what i mean about how close i get to the hair so we're going to play around with it but i just wanted to show you guys my setup and give you a little picture taking tip that way you guys can start taking better pictures in this lawn
tons of pictures for this contest. So got a lot of good content. So we had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope you found some helpful tips and you found it helpful. If you guys have any other video requests, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in my next video.